Welcome back. So things are humming along in the shop now that we're back after the open house. And uh, please excuse the dots that are on the screen on my camera. I've tried cleaning the lens and I think there's actually some dust stuck in it. So I'm actually in the process of getting a new um, phone that I record everything on uh, probably this weekend. Uh, anyway, so the guys are moving along getting these uh, ones sorted out. So these are the, that's the upper uh, four plane one. And here's the other one. So one down and one almost finished. That's got the first layers there and just needs the uh, heavy layers laid down. So uh, once that one's done, that's the last of the uh, four plane skins. And Jeff and I uh, stripped everything out of the fuselage again so we can um, start prepping all the different stuff for the stuff that goes through the forward bulkhead and um, getting the last of the things sorted out uh, so we can bond the rest of the things together because the nose was just sort of sat on there. And uh, I got that bracket done and got some longer hardware and got that bolted into place. That's the one for the governor um, adapter plate. And I got a new belt as well for the engine because the other one we think was a little bit too short. It was bending one of the pulleys a little bit. And I got this uh, new uh, line in place there because um, after these those little tabs were inserted there into the engine mount that Britt did a while back, the, or the routing I had wouldn't work um, as we had it before. And onto the sump, uh, we actually have to put like a return line into the sump uh, for the governor. So one of the things that we were talking about doing at some point was putting in a windage tray. So here you can see I've gone and uh, just sort of mocked one out of a piece of cardboard. And basically what this does is um, stop the oil from splashing back up into the crankcase if you hit any negative G kind of um, bumps. So I made it out of... Uh, sort of uh, ca cardboard there and then I scanned it on the scanner took it into CAD and have basically created it so I can run the machine and and cut it out which is better for you know uh, reproducibility because then we can just basically you know run it to cut things out and you'll see more of that shortly and here you can see uh, Jeff's bonding in um, the just wet layups here to close out those things like the hard points for where the parachute straps were in that case and Zach and Devin are working on this uh, plug for the lower cowling. And I'm sorry that I'm just flying through a lot of this stuff right now, but there was so much going on in the shop this week, I just kept pulling out my camera and just grabbing little snippets here and there. So this is another one on the Ford uh, bulkhead there, hard points um, for that one's for the battery box um, that holds it on the other side. And here you can see further along with uh, doing a test run, uh, cutting out that windage tray again, just out of the cardboard, just to see how well um, I sort of transferred over all the shapes and stuff and how that's going to fit and it seemed to fit alright so it's time to move over to the aluminum so this is a 6061 um, aluminum and just a sixteenth of an inch or sixty thousand thick and just running the, the same path on that just to cut that one out and a little bit of WD-40 just to keep things um, so it doesn't get too hot and so there it is pretty much a run and ready to be uh, unscrewed from the board and, and uh, test fit and so there was a bit of back and forth just to make it fit uh, just right and I was just modifying the CAD as I was going along so we have an, a good CAD template now so looking up in there you can actually see that's that's what you would normally see and you can see the the crankshaft in there and the bottom of the connecting rods and stuff so you, you don't want oil like splashing up in here and then big amounts so which could happen you know if you hit some turbulence or whatever or negative G's so there, that's what it looks like with the windage tray. So it allows the oil sort of to drip down around the sides and through little gaps, but it won't allow like a big amount of the oil just to sort of fly up into the crankcase area. Um, and that's it with the little lower um, sort of bracket that comes with the, with the engine um, fit into place. And then of course, you know, the sump tray goes over that. So we'll be putting um, a fixture into the, or a weld bung into the sump tray so we can return the oil um, from the governor. So anyway, onto the turbo. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of that internal wastegate on the second one. So I've unbolted that. And then this is the wastegate controller for the first one. And so I wanted to get rid of that one because that one is not adjustable. Um, and again, I just tr this is the one we just tried out from the, from the start. So anyway, I can't work with one hand and holding the cameras. <laughs> I had to sort of drop that and just get back to work. But anyway, here's the new one. And so this one's kind of longer rod and it hasn't been bent or anything like that. So you can see uh, a little bit of work is going to have to be done just to get that aligned to um, the little actuator there for the door 
Um, so anyway, that was my next project, just to bend that and um, tap the thread longer or thread the, thread the rod longer and then um, get it into place. So here you can see I'm just uh, extending the thread on that rod so it goes uh, much longer um, down the rod because I don't, you know, I need to make it shorter, but I need the thread. And here's uh, Devin and Zach working on these uh, last of the uh, four plane plugs there, doing the heavy layups on that one to finish that one. And here you see I've finished threading that, so I cut that off um, just with a little angle grinder that we have, a little rotor zip one. And now you see I've got it all fitted in place. So a little bit of messing around, but it fits nicely now. So that that um, new Turbo Smart uh, actuator there has an uh, interchangeable spring, so you can adjust um, when the wastegate opens on that. But it will also be using a solenoid um, to control it as well through the Motec ECU. So the next thing here is um, this guy. This is the um, tile uh, wastegate, and so I need to plumb that in between. Um, turbo one and two and then straight out through to the uh, straight out exhaust and so that guy is going to have to come out there because it's in the way and we'll be moving that that's that's where the um, the uh, exhaust gas temperature thing was being measured so here's here's the wastegate with a little extra pipe that I had on there and I created a little cardboard template that I've um, just out of a, a paper roll thing that we had uh, you, an empty paper roll and so just mark it on there and then I've marked it on red pen and get out there with our little uh, Dremel saw and because it was a quick way that thing just goes through steel like butter um, so I cut that real rough and then uh, got on the uh, bench grinder for a little while cleaned it up and then uh, just using the uh, right angle um, to make it fit better but you'll see that shortly and the guy's got this one finished, so that one basically now uh, just needs to have the bracing put on there. So that's the last of the four plane skins. And this is um, that one for the lower cowling. And uh, just in the process of putting the rubber um, profile around that one. And here is Zach's marking out uh, the other one, four plane one, ready to trim that off. And so here you can see this is that pipe there. So I've done a little bit more fitment there using the right angle and now you can see Jeff's sort of holding into place and then there's the other bit of cardboard that I have and that's how it's going to mate across there and I'm waiting on some uh, one and a half inch um, stainless steel pipe for that one because I didn't have any and the next thing is uh, now that we've got the sump off one of the things we wanted to do um, it has a level in there that comes with the Audi engine but because we're not running the factory ECU the level doesn't work so uh, Jeff picked up this um, this sort of uh, fuel level sensor here and we wanted to test it and make sure it works uh, in the oil so as you can see it's hooked to the meter um, you know it's basically a float thing that works with a magnet and uh, so the idea is we're going to install it into the sump and then we'll have an indication of when the when the uh, oil level is low now obviously an Audi engine and this is Zach just trimming this thing um, the Audi engine doesn't burn through oil like an aviation engine and the dipstick is really difficult to access the way the engine's oriented. So you're not going to have to check it every day like you do normally find in a regular aircraft, but you do want to kind of know if it's low. And this way we're going to have an indication on the, on the avionics to say if your oil's low, um, which will be just as good as uh, looking at your dipstick every time. So anyway, see we basically filled that up with oil and uh, just wanted to see where the trigger point was for it. And you see when there's a one on there, it means it's not actually being triggered. So it's gonna be triggered when there's a low oil condition. You see if I, so that when there's a one there, it's basically not being triggered. Okay, so when I tip this, you'll see that it's sort of um, simulating a low oil condition. And it takes a little while because that thing is designed to not sort of slosh around. Then when it goes to zero, it means it's triggered the switch. So basically that's working there. And when you let it back down again, it takes about 15 seconds before it kind of uh, um, triggers it back the other way. So we shouldn't get any sort of false indications back and forth. And we're gonna be mounting it in the back of the sump. So when, you when you're climbing out, flying and climbing out, um, and the oil sort of moves to the back of the sump, you won't get an, um, a false indication that you've got low oil. So anyway, that uh, should fix our problem for not having a good oil indication and here you can see Jeff just closed out a few more of these hard points just with wet layups 
um, to get those all sorted out. And there's the holes for the four different pass-throughs for the air conditioning system. And um, we've got like a little fixture that came with the air conditioning system that has the four uh, different fittings that go through there. So Jeff just has to still put the hard point in there, but he's basically just drilled the holes out there. Um, so that's sort of coming along. And there's the ones that he did earlier that have um, for the parachute things, and those been peel ply been taken off. And this is actually done like a week ago. This is just some um, brackets that he sort of fabricated to hold that cross beam there and the aluminum. And there's the other side of the AC holes. So that's all coming along. And uh, all right, so there we go. There's our oil thing there, and this is kind of the sump, and that's kind of where I'm going to put it. So I had to actually bend that on a 45. And trying to get it at the right level is a bit tricky. Um, so I kind of just eyeballed it and drilled a hole where I thought it was going to be. And um, had to do a little bit of massaging, you'll see in a second. And meanwhile, uh, Jeff's putting together some of these uh, pulleys and stuff for the ailerons. Um, and you see he's put alodyne on those to stop uh, any sort of corrosion and stuff. So that's coming along with the flight controls. And uh, back on the oil thing, so that's basically how it mounts there. And I had to bend it back and forth a couple little times to get it exactly where I wanted to be and get it level. But it's going to sit in the sump like that. And there's how that sort of housing sits around it. So now we have an oil indication light and we have our windage tray. And uh, soon we'll have a little bung in there for the return for the governor. And sort of everything's moving along with getting the engine all back sorted out with all the things we needed to do. Anyway, that's our update for this week, and um, thanks again for watching.